Example 5.15. In this example, there is an static thrust stand which is being designed for a testing of a jet engine. The following conditions are known for a typical test. The intake velocity is 200 meters per second. The exhaust gas velocity is 500 meters per second. The intake cross-sectional area is one meter square. The intake static pressure is equal to negative 22.5 kilopascals. The intake static pressure is equal to 268 kelvins. The exhaust pressure is equal to zero kilopascals. The goal of the problem is to estimate the normal anchoring force for which we need to design this thrust stand. This is a case for conservation of momentum. We're going to assume that the velocities at the entrance and at the exit of the jet engine are going to be constant. We have two control surfaces, one for the entrance, one for the exit, and the control volume is designated by this boundary. Since this problem involves conservation of momentum, the first step is to draw a free body diagram for the problem. So notice that at the entrance, we're going to have an incoming pressure. So the force is going to be P1 and the area A1 and it's going into the control volume. In the same way, at point two, we have the equivalent for pressure two, A2, once again, going into the control volume. The last force that we need is what we need to calculate, which is basically the design force. And we're gonna call it FTH. These are the three forces that we are going to be required. Notice that the motion only takes place in the x-axis, so we only consider velocities in this direction. Since the case is steady, we're able to neglect the first term in this equation. For the second term, once again, we evaluate whether the velocities are constant at each of the control surfaces. And since this is the case, we could substitute this integral by the summation of the velocities times the mass flow rates at each one of the uh, control surfaces. So we could just say this, and that is going to be equal to the summation of the forces in that particular case. So let's do it now for the different control surfaces. So we have two, so we're gonna put one and control surface two, and we put velocity one, mass flow rate one, velocity two, mass flow rate two. We go for the signs. The velocity is positive since it goes in the positive x direction. Mass flow rate is going in at point one, therefore is going to be negative. Velocity at point two is positive. Once again, because it goes in the direction of the positive x-axis. And mass flow rate two is positive since it's going out of the system, of the control volume. The forces that we are going to have is going to be positive P1 A1, positive FTH minus P2 A2. So now what we need to do is calculate and solve for each one of the quantities to replace in this particular equation. So now let's write the values we know. We know that the incoming velocity U1 is equal to 200 meters per second. We also know that the outgoing velocity is equal to 500 meters per second. Since the effect that the atmospheric pressure is exactly the same in both the entrance and the exit, we are able to use the gauge pressure for both locations. Therefore, for P1, we're going to use negative 22.5 kilopascals. And for P2, we're going to use zero. So the only thing that we're missing is to calculate the mass flow rate. As we know, the mass flow rate at point one is equal to the mass flow rate at point two due to conservation of mass or continuity, and that is equal to rho 
uh, u1 a1 so now for us to be able to calculate these values we need to find out what is the value of density at the entrance notice that we have air as the fluid involved in this problem and since it's air we're able to find the density that is incoming based on the ideal gas law and we have the value of the pressure and the value of the temperature at those locations please note that the pressure and the temperature must be in almost in absolute uh, quantities for us to be able to use them in ideal gas law if we use the quantities that we have we are going to calculate the density to be 1.02 kilograms meter cube if we take this value the velocity of 200 meter per second and an area of one meter square we could find that that the mass flow rate is equal to 204 kilograms per second substituting all these values into the main equation we could find out that the anchoring force is going to be equal to 87 I'm sorry 83,700 newtons and this is the amount of force that is designed for the thrust to be able to hold this jet engine